I always believe that if marketing is a talk, branding is a walk. There is still a, a space for luxury itself, especially when you're talking about diamond and gemstone. Even during the pandemic, we still need to be in the hearts and minds of our customers. I feel in the future, love is still love, right? Hi, I'm Ziwei, uh, co-founder from uh, Zakova. And Zakova is uh, one of the biggest online diamond and gemstone company in Malaysia. Why we started Zakova is really to bring diamonds more accessible, to be more accessible to uh, everybody. And uh, bringing diamond directly to consumer, taking out the middleman and taking out all the other costs that actually put the cost up for this uh, commodity. And what we feel as in Zakova is that diamond is actually a commodity and it shouldn't you know, add on your brand uh, uh, cost, your marketing cost in it. Therefore, bringing it uh, something that uh, everybody can actually uh, use for the public. Hi, I'm Linda. I'm the Marketing and Communications Director for Bonia and Brambofel. I have been in the business of branding and marketing for over 10 years. And I always believe that if marketing is a talk, branding is the work. I think both marketing and branding is essential to building a brand. Uh, marketing is the long-term strategic direction where we want to bring the brand in the next 5 to 10 years and branding uh, is the outcome of the DNA on how people perceive your brand. I think the pandemic didn't really change the uh, business uh, for our business because we are uh, purely online. But it kind of reinstate our belief that you, uh, that uh, online is, is something that we need to uh, uh, adapt and uh, move forward to. We also now currently have like an omni-channel where our customers are able to actually visit one of our experience centers uh, in JB and also KL. With this uh, pandemic, it shows that um, even though uh, we are able to do everything online, towards customers, we still need to have that kind of experience where people are able to touch and feel. For our employees, we want to you know, settle them into the whole new work from home culture and provide them this strong sense of assurance from all these uncertainties that's been going around. And for our customers, we have to you know, re-innovate the way how we engage with them as the customer journey has completely changed. As you know, stores are closed, so we can't see them and so on. So all our stuff, uh, store associates you know, had to come together to you know, segment our customers and find ways to reach out to them via calls, WhatsApp, send them e-catalogs, options on the link to shop online and find out what are the things that they need to purchase. Ah. Do you mind to it up? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, teamwork. Yeah. yeah, thank you. In terms of uh, how do we actually uh, evolve uh, during this time, uh, during the pandemic, it's really uh, to continue educating our customers on our brand, our uh, brand image, our value, and also uh, uh, our product itself. It's not really selling at this time, you know, uh, but to continue uh, educating them about the brand so that we can see them coming back after the, the pandemic. During the pandemic, we actually um, uh, really introduced how to, how to actually buy gemstones, how do you design gemstones for the younger generations. Because we truly believe that you know, gemstones now in this market is usually uh, bought by um, the older generation. And the younger generation don't see the value in gemstones yet. We at Bonia actually double our marketing budget this year as we truly believe the importance of branding. Even during the pandemic, we still need to be in the hearts and minds of our customers. One example we can see is that when the malls are reopened lately, Brands with stronger brand equity do see a higher demand and foot traffic in their stores. There is still a, a space for luxury itself, especially when you're talking about diamond and gemstone, which is a commodity, right? And uh, the more and more uh, education that you give to uh, people, people are more educated about all these uh, commodity, uh, especially diamonds. And I feel in the future, love is still love, right?
the future younger generations are going to make up the majority market share of the luxury segment. So there will be more concerns on how companies and brands include sustainability in their product development and the way how they can personalize products. It should be a part of the company KPI to put sustainability and also environment into the reporting of their company because I think we are responsible for our, our children's future. For us, in terms of for, uh, our diamond industry, Kimberley process is something that we take it into uh, is as a very important criteria for, for uh, obtaining all these uh, gemstones and things like that, right? To ensure that it is uh, being ethically sourced and, uh, and uh, sustainable in that sense. I very strongly feel that, you know, companies should take this uh, as a number one priority. The way how we look at sustainability is how we, you know, give back to the environment. So, uh, collaborating with associations such as the Breast Cancer Association or Green Ribbon Group, giving back a certain percentage of our sales by supporting back the communities and also including the upcoming plan by planting the tree campaigns, making a world, the world a better place to live in. For us, I feel that uh, technology will be the future in terms of our uh, fashion industry. Uh, especially come to clothing, jewellery, right? So we have this augmented reality app on our website. So we found that a lot of our customer is actually uh, very receptive of this uh, technology where they can try on their jewellery. Actually for us, uh, it's a very personal kind of uh, connection with our customers. So each and every one of our customers uh, do have a, a consultant that consult them in terms of what kind of jewellery they want and things like that. In order to continue this legacy of business, we have to constantly innovate the retail experience offline and online, continue to surprise our customers in order to stay afloat. We innovated the way how we present our products by creating a very beautiful e-catalogue and we send it to them, which, which is like an e-flip book over WhatsApp. And they are all very uh, receptive towards the way of uh, browsing these products from the WhatsApp, right? And we managed to close a huge amount of deals even via these WhatsApp channels. This is a Malaysian brand that all of us can be proud of, of the achievement that you have today. And really how Zukowa look, look at uh, Bonia is that we want to be uh, how Bonia is today, you know, to be the brand that uh, everybody knows is from Malaysia and uh, is, is making wave in the, in the, in the uh, industry itself. 40 over years, uh, uh, it means you have to go through like a lot of uh, different kind of trend, different kind of uh, ups and downs, especially uh, the financial crisis, you know. So, you know, going through all this and can be what it is today, this is what we call resilient, you know. I'm actually very impressed the way how the um, you know, changed the way how we perceive uh, how we should shop for diamonds. I'm also like a diamond lover. I always thought that you know, by buying diamonds, I have to go down to the retailers, spend hours to talk to them, examine the diamonds myself. But you actually changed the way how I look at it. Your website is very uh, informative. You gave all sorts of contents that actually answers all you know, my doubts, my questions, how, how we know whether it is, is it authentic, uh, where do you source your diamonds from. It's very transparent, so I think this is something I really admire. Mm -hmm.